Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with how to make 3000 to 5000 your first month on eBay and Amazon. This is going to be a three to four part series because I'm learning to make these webinars shorter and give you more actionable content. So let's go. First of all, you have to have a plan, your grand plan, because this is where people go wrong with eBay and Amazon. And in this section, I'm going to talk about the plan and how you can set this up. First, you do the math. How many items do you need to make? Let's say 5,000. You say, okay, you wanna, that's gross sales. That is not total profit, because you know you've got some costs, but you know, let's say gross sales of 5,000. How many items do you need? So you take 5,000, and I'm not gonna do it on the screen. I'll do it in my head, I use a piece of paper and you divide it by 100 items. Now, it's a $50 price point. Think about that. So to make $5,000 gross sales on eBay and Amazon, you need 100 products that sell for $50 or more. Get that. Uh, I will expand on that concept. When I was in the storage auction business, we had so much small stuff that we literally gave it away because it was easy to get. We made our money on the middle tier. The small stuff paid the bills, but you know this is a little different because if you're a storage auction person, you get what you get. This is what I call targeted sourcing. So going back to the original point, $5,000 is $100. $50 items. Think about that. So if you moved it up to 100 bucks, so you go 5,000 divided by 100. Yes, yeah, $150 items or $5,100 items. So let's do this. Let's go 5,000 divided by 75. So I did that wrong. <laughs> Here we go. Not that, you know, about 35 items. So your whole plan is to think larger than you normally do, because this is what most people do. I'm going to get some stuff and I hope to make money. That's not good enough. That's not even close to good enough. So let's really now I'm getting ready to really rock your world. OK, so we came to that. So what you want to do is get fifteen thousand dollars worth of inventory. Why? Because if you source five thousand dollars worth of inventory, you're not going to sell all of it. Even if it's hot, you may not sell all of it. And then you have to factor in returns, damage, stuff like that. You want to be ahead of the curve. So to sell five thousand dollars worth of stuff per month, you need. $15,000 worth of inventory. You'll also need $750 to $1,000 in seed money because your main business is procurement. And with some of these new tools I'm going to show you, it's going to be a lot easier than ever. You want to source five to seven days a week. You want to be on the hunt for merchandise all of the time. There are people who use Amazon FBA who source two or three days a week who are doing 10, 15, 20,000 a month, but they spend eight hours out there sourcing and scanning stuff. Now, what's really every, what's crazy now is getting quality inventory is so easy now compared to what it used to be like, because this is the thing. I talked about some of these guys and I always said I was gonna do a video about it and one that they wouldn't see coming. You have so many people who are resellers that come on YouTube and they talk about what they bought. They talk about what it sold for. Watch these people. There are many of you who are already smart. You're doing this, but I'm going to give you even a better plan to take advantage for their need for fame. Watch them, take notes. And, you know, when I say scanning videos, like you may not want to watch the whole video. YouTube has this little deal where if you hoover your mouse over the little clip, 
you can kind of see what's coming next. So you can just kind of scan the video, see if they hold up items. So sometimes you may have to watch it to get the information. But the minute they mentioned an item, uh, there was one guy that mentioned some nozzles and he was selling them on the Amazon FBA and he put it up there and then the sales went down and more sellers entered the market. I'm like, duh, I warned them. But they continue to do it and then you will have new YouTubers who are just like, hey, we're about helping and they're going to help you make a lot of money. So watch them, you know, and another thing to do is subscribe to toy channels. Now, you are totally ass out for toys right now. If you do not have a developed toy channel on Amazon right now, they're not going to let you sell for Christmas. They will cut you off. They'll send you an email. It's like, hey, you can't sell. And then January 1st, you're open up to sell toys. So you have to start selling toys before the holiday season because so many people go out there and try to get in on the fame. So subscribe to toy channels, subscribe to picker channels. And then here's your baby. When you're watching these people, don't just watch them uh, if you can. I'm not saying you have to go out and buy this stuff, but watch them and have either an iPad or another computer. So when they're talking about something, you do two things. You go here on Craigslist if it fits your pricing points, which we talked about. I'm not telling you to go out and get $10 stuff. I'm not telling you to go out and get $20 stuff. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, because the numbers make sense. Because even at, let's see, let's do 30. You know, I can do it in my head. Even at $30, you know, selling points, that's about 156, 157 items. You know, and we will talk about how you stack up because I did say that you need $15,000 worth of inventory. But see, this is the beauty of how to work this system. You can reinvest profits to get to that point until you build your business to a point where you can extract money. So you're watching these guys, you go here and you start putting in searches, but you don't do one search. You want to have 150 to 200 searches going until you weed out what really works, because I know for a fact you can sell the same item over and over and over. There's a bedroom set, and you've seen it, and it's called a Louis Philippi. It's a sleigh bed. It's cherry. It's got the, the matching traditional drawers, or you pull out the top part, and there's hidden jewelry drawers. That bedroom set has been around for like 20 years. I got that set, no lie, maybe 200 times out of storage units and sold it each and every time. So you can... Take that information, and when you get something from these guys, and it sells well on, excuse me, eBay or Amazon, you put it on your cheat sheet. Okay, this is a good seller. Even if the price depreciates, no problem, because what you're doing is stacking a quality inventory. Because I want you to imagine, if you source a hundred things a month that sell for a hundred dollars. That's $10,000 in gross sales. If you can manage to get this stuff at 20%, we're going to make an 80% margin, which is very doable. It's very doable. So you create your cheat sheet and the good sellers, the things that are going on, or say you find an item, and this is, this is a little tripped up for some sellers. There's an item and it's going to cost you, say, 500 bucks, but... You can only sell it for $750, and you have to be careful with selling it on Amazon. You might want to put it back on Craigslist, or you might want to put it on eBay because it's $750. You know, they're going to take 25%, so you, actually you've made no money. So you got to be careful with that. Amazon FBA may be a different deal. But if you have this item, it costs you 500 bucks, but you know you can sell it in a day or two without, you know, you know, not, well, I hope, no. You know that this item is so hot that you can sell it in a day or two. And say you can get six of these in a week. So you're going to spend three grand, but you can make 1200 bucks in a week. Think about that. Because a lot of people, and it took me a minute to wrap my head around that concept in the store trucking business because I would see people buy rooms that they weren't going to make massive profit, but they could sell the stuff fast. So you've, you've got to learn how to stack your inventory mindset. There's stuff that's long tail stuff. Like, say 
you get this rare card game. Just throwing something out there. And, you know, when they sell, they sell for a thousand bucks, but they don't sell quickly. That's a long tail item. You pick up those on the cheap if you can get them for free or drastically, drastically cheap. And that's something else you stack in another part of your inventory. Because the deal is when you learn inventory acquisition and inventory management, that's where you make your money. Because when I had the warehouse, it, when you know I got sick, it took me six months to clean it out. Sold about 80% of the stuff the first three months. And then the rest, it just dragged on. But we weren't adding anything to it. I'll tell you, we cleared seven figures when we sold all our inventory. A lot of people don't know that. And that was stuff, and understand, it was two warehouses. There was stuff in prop. There was all kinds of stuff. And I was dragging ass. You know, my partner was sick. But when you have inventory that you got really cheaply that is easy to warehouse, and the warehousing costs are not seriously impacting, you know, warehousing costs do impact margins, your profit margins. So let's you know, be real factual about that. But, you know, that warehouse had, you know, 1.8 million, both of them about $1.8 million worth of stuff in it. And the rent was twenty five hundred on the big one and twelve hundred on the smaller one. You know, to sell a few items to pay the rent. So understand, which brings me to the next point. You've got to set yourself up for success. When you're getting this stuff, you got to have a place to put it. Because I saw this in the forum and I started laughing. There was a person that was doing Amazon FBA, and they said when they got to three storage units, they just had to break down to get the warehouse. Because they had reached, see, working out of a storage unit is good and hard. Because the thing is, it's designed to get as much stuff as possible in there for long term storage. It's not about working out of it. So you understand. The way that the thing is set up is not beneficial for business because if you're going to sell off a storage unit, you have to leave gaps and alleys and room for you to walk in, get stuff, or if you got furniture, show customers. So you need to have an eye for developing future storage space because I've talked a lot of people out of opening up a store. It's like, get a warehouse, get a warehouse, get a warehouse. Because I want you to think about this. And that we did this. You can sell on eBay from your warehouse. You can sell on Amazon from your warehouse. You can sell on Craigslist from your warehouse. Get a business license. It's just like, hey, we're an online retailer. And, you know, yeah, if people happen to come to the warehouse, so what? So definitely that's your best way to go. It's cheaper. And with that, I want you to understand. Now that you have this formula, and like I said, this is just the first part. This is just to kind of wet your whistle, give you a little time to look at some things because we're going to do more and more of this because the deal is if you want to make money on eBay and Amazon, it is all about the inventory. It is 100% about the inventory. And in the next one, I'm going to show you how to, you know, this is pretty much you know who the, the resellers are. Just put reseller because you find one, you'll find the rest of them and just start watching and taking notes. Just don't watch their videos like, oh, OK, this is interesting. Watch with a computer and iPad. And while they're talking about it, you're looking it up. You're searching for it on Craigslist. You're creating a cheat sheet. You're, you're building an inventory list. And then when you get with Amazon. This is another thing. There's a lot of people that do retail arbitrage, which is going to stores, buying new stuff and selling it, you know, between the uh, differential between what it's selling for on Amazon and what you can get from out the store. A lot of people do what I call scavenger arbitrage, which is, you know, buying this stuff at storage units, retail, you know, going to garage sales or estate sales. Now, I want you to think about this. When you get really good at this, you'll get people to start bringing you inventory. And that's something we'll talk about later on. But this is the first session, just some things to open up your mind for you to sit down with pen, paper, or pad 
and, and think about what you can get. Because the thing is, when I was selling books, you know, my first year, I sold maybe 2,000 books, ebooks, uh, you know, ebooks, uh, PDFs, and 62,000. It's the price points. You know, you hear people, the small stuff matters. If you go to a garage sale and every weekend you go out to garage sales and you don't spend no more than 500 bucks for the whole month, that is roughly $125 uh, a weekend. You're not going to get a lot of this stuff. You may get that one outlier or a few outliers. You may get that good hit where you buy something for five and make 500 bucks. It happens. It happened to me. A more dependable and more steady income stream and business model is to buy something for 10 and to make $20 profit or $30 profit. That's more sustainable, easier to do, or to buy something for 20 and sell it for 40. You can do that more frequently. And if you could do it frequently with velocity, turn your cash very fast, it's, it's very sustainable and it's easier because this is the thing. There are people who are looking for what I call killer profit margins. They bought something for five bucks and the Google antique guide on the web says it's worth 10,000. They could sell it today for three, but it's like the Google guy of the antiques said it's worth 10 and they'll hold on to it for 10 years. <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. All right. This is Glenn and Cameron. This is the first session and uh, I'll see you on the good side.